Now, a Peterborough woman whose father died after being given contaminated blood has criticised the lack of support for victims and families. It follows an announcement from the government about help for victims of blood contamination. Hundreds of thousands of people were infected with hepatitis C and HIV in the 1970s and 80s after being treated with NHS blood products. The Minister for Public Health now says £100 million will go towards more support for those affected. Kerry Oliver is from Peterborough. Morning, Kerry. Good morning. So tell me about your dad. What happened? Why did he need blood in the first place? Um, uh, he, he and my mother, they had a, a car traffic accident in the late 80s and uh, he required a, a blood transfusion. OK, and so he had one. This was in the late 80s. And yeah. when did you get the first signs that something wasn't right? Um, that would be uh, just three months before he died in 2004, five, four. OK, and how old was your dad when he died? He was 47. And before his transfusion, he had been, he had been a healthy man? Oh, yes, very much so. OK. And, and what did he die from, Kerry? Was it an illness? Was it hep C or HIV? It was hepatitis C. Uh, he died from liver cancer. OK, and it wasn't until just a few months before his passing that, that you found out that this was connected to his blood transfusion? Yes, yes, that's correct. OK. What kind of help did you and your mum get back um, then? Well, uh, uh, my mother received uh, ex gratia payments um, in the first instance, um, but nothing since, and my mother continues to receive nothing. And have the NHS acknowledged that this was their mistake? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, Mr Cameron very kindly um, apologised in uh, March last year and said that he would make it a priority to ensure that uh, he uh, sorted this mess out uh, entirely. And do you feel that he has, Kerry? Oh, no, not at all. Not in any way. So what for you would have been sorting this mess out? Uh, full and final uh, uh, compensation to, you know, so we can put this all to bed for a start. Uh, it's just never ending. Um, it's disgraceful. So how has it affected yours and, and your mum's life since you found out about this blood contamination? Oh, it's destroyed our lives, destroyed my mother's lives. Uh, every, every, it, it's just, it's like being hit by a bus. And, uh, you know, it adds insult to injury when, you know, under, there's this new thing uh, coming out, under this new plan and proposal, uh, my mother is set to receive nothing. Okay. So basically, they, you know, they've killed her husband, they've killed my father, and they're saying, well, okay, never mind, but, you know, you don't fit our, our, our plan. They did promise that nobody would be worse off under this new uh, plan, but that clearly isn't the case. So what kind of support have you been getting? Because you've not been getting anything from the government, you say. No, my, my mother receives nothing. Um, there's, there's something called a, the Caxton Foundation, which is basically like a begging bowl. But, um, you know, my mum's quite a proud woman and she just flatly refuses to, you know, keep begging and writing letters for, oh, maybe can I please have a little bit of help? And what kind of help does she need, Kerry? She wants security for the rest of her days, like, like everybody else affected by this absolute nightmare. Are there families that have had compensation? I believe that there have been... Uh, uh, I believe Jane Ellison mentioned something that uh, uh, liability had not been proven in the majority of cases. And it's kind of my belief that the fact that majority... It, that that's happened because the government <laughs> blocks any kind of legal action that that people may wish to take i mean the government have said that they're investing a hundred million pounds why is it that that your family won't be eligible for the, any of that money a hundred million pounds that sounds absolutely fabulous doesn't it that makes it look so oh yes a hundred million pounds they uh, people must be um you know, getting it, getting lots of money, but that that clearly isn't the case. The majority of people affected uh, will will actually be worse off under this new scheme. Um, they're using a good portion of this uh, 100 million pounds to uh, pay for very expensive drugs. Um, 
So, but, but shouldn't that be done through the National Health anyway? So those are drugs that will be helping people who, who had the contaminated blood and are suffering from these diseases at the moment, from hep C and, H- and HIV? It, w- it would be for the hepatitis C, the people infected with hepatitis C. Okay. And Kerry, just going back again to, to the moment that you found out what had happened, how did you find out? It was only when uh, my, my father was told in the hospital that he had, uh, he had liver cancer and that it was, he also had hepatitis C. And it was there that when, obviously, through his medical records, realised that he'd had this uh, massive uh, blood transfusion, um, that we were told that it was, was through that. And how did he feel about it in the subsequent months before he died? Um, I think we were all just in like a dream world, really. We just couldn't believe it. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Kerry, thank you for coming on this morning and sharing your story, because I know it must be very difficult. It's it's obviously a really, really tough and, and sad and emotional topic. Kerry Oliver there, uh, who's from Peterborough. Hundreds of thousands of people were affected by these contaminated blood transfusions in the 70s and 80s. If this is something that's affected you or that's affected your family... Do get in touch this morning and and tell me your experience. It's 03459 25 2000. Did you get any compensation from the government? Have you had much support over the years? And were you taking notice of this announcement from the Minister for Public Health last week and thinking, well, that's all very well, but it might not help me? I don't know. Maybe you were listening to Jane Ellison and cheering, thinking that this was great news. Do get in touch. You can email me as well if it's easier. It's dotty at bbc.co.uk. This is BBC Radio Cambridgeshire. Uh, Now, we heard from a woman from Peterborough earlier on this morning talking about her father, um, who died after contracting hepatitis C after being treated with contaminated blood. This follows an announcement last week from the government about help for victims of blood contamination. Thousands of people were infected with hepatitis C and HIV in the 1970s and 80s after being treated with NHS blood products. The Minister for Public Health now says £100 million will go towards more support to those affected. Uh, Tony, who lives in St Neots, has also been affected by this, uh, and he's on the line now. Morning, Tony. Morning. So so what's your family's story? Uh, Well, my family are haemophiliacs. So what does that mean? uh, Their their blood doesn't clot properly, and they require blood products with the clotting factor in to to, um, achieve blood clotting. Okay. Um, My father was infected with HIV, hep C, uh, hepatitis B, CMV and herpes uh, through the products that he received from the NHS. Um, he was diagnosed, well they actually knew he was infected in, in 1983, a letter was placed into his medical file which has since been removed, um, but they didn't tell him until 1985. Uh, within 12 months of telling him uh, the HIV uh, started to affect his brain. Uh, so they sectioned him under the Mental Health Act. Um, We never saw him again. You're joking. No, that's the honest truth. Uh, And how old were you at the time, Tony? I was was 14 when he died. Uh, I was 13 when I was removed from the family home and placed into local care. God, that must have been so difficult, Tony. It was at the time, yeah. Uh, I mean, also, I think it was only a couple of days after my dad died, um, my twin brother was also placed in care um, and actually made to have blood tests to prove to the home that he wasn't infected or they refused to take him because your little brother was born and my twin brother your brother was born right yeah no he wasn't he wasn't born with it my my younger brother was born while my dad was infected yeah fortunately uh, both my mother and the 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 new baby were clear which, which was very lucky I mean, it almost beggars belief, doesn't it, Tony? I can barely get my head around this, that these people, people like your dad, went into hospital to get better and went out with, you know, new infections, life-threatening infections, and this happened to thousands of people. Yeah, it wasn't just my father. Only a few days after uh, my father died, they actually diagnosed my dad's brother with HIV as well uh, because haemophilia runs in the family. Um, And then a few years later, they diagnosed his other brother with hepatitis C, 
and later on exposure to mad cow's disease. So this has had just the most extraordinary impact on your family? It's totally destroyed the family. Totally destroyed the family. Um, and the, the, the new... Um, the, the, the consultation that, that has now been put in place where people are talking about this £125 million, um, it, it's actually not what it seems. Um, most of the people with HIV uh, currently receive about £14,700. And, and have you been receiving compensation no, like that? No, our family have never received a single penny. My father. Why died. is that? My father died before the trust was set up. He was one of the first to die. Uh, back in 1986, the trusts weren't actually set up until round about 1991. Um, so by the time the trust was set up, most of the dependent children in the family, uh, myself and my brother, um, we were over 18, so we were excluded. And the widow uh, of my father and the widow of both of my other uncles have also been excluded from the trust. Um, it's all charity-based. If you, if you have an income, then you don't, you don't qualify for uh, the, the payments. Uh, these, these new payments will actually see everybody with HIV um, have their money reduced. There's a, there's a £5,000 discretionary fund uh, that's available to these people. That's actually under this new scheme been abolished. Uh, the payments were linked to Consumer Price Index. That's also been abolished. So, so it won't go up with inflation? No, it won't go up with inflation. Most of the people this year will receive the 15000 flat rate, which would see the increase of about £250 this year, which they would have got under the CPI anyway. But now they've abolished it, um, everybody will be worse off. The £125 million that's been promised um, actually isn't for uh, payments for the victims. It's actually for the NHS to clear the Hep C victims of the virus. They don't have to pay them. Um, we will not see any money, or the victims at the moment will not see any money extra from this 125 million. Well, Tony, um, I'm so sorry um, for, for, for what has happened to your family over the years. It's just, I mean, it's crazy the impact that something like this, the NHS action can have on people. Um, and thank you for coming on the show this morning uh, to share your story, strikingly similar to that that we heard from Kerry Oliver from Peterborough earlier on. Uh, that's Tony, who lives in St Neots.